Good afternoon. I'm Ariana Cohen-Halberstam. I am the Artistic Director of Boston Jewish Film. Welcome to our 32nd annual festival and to our event about an irrepressible woman. I want to thank our partner on today's film, the Consulate General of France to Boston. It is now my pleasure to introduce the moderator of this discussion, Sarah Rubin. Sarah is the Artistic Director Emerita of Boston Jewish Film Festival and she was given recognition in 2006 by the French Ministry of Culture for her work on behalf of French culture and cinema. It is also my great pleasure to introduce the producer of An Irrepressible Woman, Nelly Kosky. Nelly is a seasoned veteran of film and television. She has produced more than 50 TV shows and films, and she runs a production company called Mazel Productions. Welcome, thank you for joining us. I'm very happy to join you. Thank you, Ariana. Um, so, uh, Nelly, I think uh, it, I wish we were together, uh, but we're not. And you, I think, are in the middle of uh, yet another lockdown. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Since how long has that been? Uh, um, it started two weeks ago, okay. and um, but uh, we we can go out with an uh, um, an authorization, mm -hmm. one hour per day. Mm -hmm. And if work, we can also go to work, but it's not so easy. And now everybody are locked down at uh, home yeah. and we work as we can on, yeah. on video. And I'm very glad to see you. Even we are locked down, everybody in the world. <laughs> right. So it's great to have you here. Um, I wanted to just take a minute for American audiences um, so your film uh, has as one of its central characters, we have one character, uh, Jeanneau, uh, Jean Reichenbach, who uh, is, uh, gives it all up for love. And we have another Leon Bloom, who's uh, well, mo more well known in France than here. So I wanted to take one second to just share a picture of him because we'll talk about his, the person who plays his character. So um, if everybody can give me one second, I'm going to show you a photo. So that's sort of an iconic picture, if I'm not mistaken, of Leon Bloom. He was the yes, first. Exactly. Hmm? Go ahead. Yes, exactly. It's uh, the good uh, photography. Yes. Sometimes and he had the uh, other uh, glasses, but. Uh... <laughs> You know him very well then, that's for sure. So um, in that case, uh, but now that we've had a good look at him, um, basically he was the first uh, Jewish prime minister and the first socialist prime minister of France. He was born in 1872, and I believe his first time as prime minister was in 1936. He basically pulled together a coalition of um, political parties on the left, including the communists and various uh, forms of socialists and created what was known as the Fonds Populaire. And as I understand it, we owe him a debt of gratitude because he was the first to start two weeks paid vacation. And because of that, yes. yeah. You tell us a little bit more about what he's accomplished. Uh, even now, French citizens, they, they don't realize their improved working uh, conditions. 40 hours uh, uh, work week and paid vacation and uh, job security uh, um, and everything that Bloom invented that, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, the French, even the French, they don't remember all that. And or what was also very important is that he brought after the war three women at the government and it was the first time. And you know, the French woman, they didn't have uh, the right to vote. Uh, so it was extraordinary that he was successful for that. Yes. So he had, uh, he had actually three women as sub-cabinet ministers, which is pretty yes. amazing. Uh, it was like minister. In France, it's like minister. OK. Yeah. And thank you for that. Um, that's great. And uh, I think also um, he kind of kind formed, formed the pathway, if I'm not mistaken, not mistaken. from, uh, from uh, uh, he was a, a basically pro-Dreyfus. Many people know about the Dreyfus conflict and that it split the country a bit. And um, so he was somebody who was um, 
really pro Dreyfus, and that continued uh, into his his uh, actions in in thirty six. Yes, uh, and and you must not forget that he was also uh, an important Zionist uh, leader, uh, working with uh, Shaim Weizmann, and okay. was personally responsible for France vote to recognize the state of Israel. So it was, it is very important, you know, and it's a great man. It's very great man. And we choose uh, another way to, to tell the story because in France, it's not up to date to make uh, historical films. So mm -hmm. the best way is to speak about, about love, you know, yeah. love story. And uh, this love story was incredible because this irrepressible woman, a generation back, uh, she was completely crazy from about him. And as she, she was 16 years old and she followed him, all the, she waited for him, but she married twice because yeah. in, in, in high society, in Jewish high society, the, the women, they didn't stay uh, alone. They had to marry. And uh, first she married a, a lawyer and this lawyer, uh, was not a very serious man. He always uh, go with dancers and with uh, actresses and so. So she divorced. So she was very, very uh, free, uh, free lady. And then she uh, married again and uh, she was not in love from him. She was waiting for Leon Bloom. Leon Bloom, Leon Bloom, Leon Bloom. That's in, it was in her head. And uh, so, when, you know, when a, a, when a woman has something in the head, uh, you can't take it out uh, so easily. And uh, she helped a lot, uh, Leon Bloom, when, when she was uh, in jewel and, uh, and all, all, all the life. So you saw the film, it's exactly the film. And I have to tell you something, I'm sorry, Sarah. Uh, uh, we met uh, very... Uh, uh, I don't know how with somebody who told us that the uh, the granddaughter of Jeanne Reichenbach was alive. She is now uh, 75 years old, and is the, the little baby you see at the end of the of the film, wow. and uh, and we had to show her the film first. And uh, we were we were so uh, scared and afraid because you know it's a true story and it was difficult to to tell her to to show her this this film and she saw the film and then the light uh, put our, our on and then we saw her she was crying she uh. was crying and she was so upset and she said it's the first time. It's the first time that uh, a film or a book speaks about my my father. The father is George. You you know the the young young man who was killed. Yes, who was killed after you know uh, in 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 the war during the war. So that was marvelous. This time uh, to meet her, and then she make all the promotion of the film with us. That's fabulous. And it's also wonderful that the film is written in a way the narration starts as a letter to her from yes. her grandmother, which is yes. quite lovely. Um, mm. Maybe you can talk a little bit about when the film came out in France and what its history as a film is uh, from, from then to now. And th this film was directed by uh, Laurent Enemann. And Laurent Enemann, I I, um, I worked with him first with, on a film about Bousquet. Bousquet was a, um, a minister uh, in France. He was left, uh, he was left uh, from left like Jean Moulin, but he was very bad with Jew, Jewish people and he collab collaborated with, uh, with the enemy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he sent a lot of Jewish people, French people, Fran French Jewish people and strangers also, Jewish uh, from right. from everywhere to the camps. Mm -hmm. uh, so we made a film together with Laura and Man about that, uh, and um, and uh, so we are very. Uh, I, I was uh, I was I trust a lot to Laura and Man, and I had not so much money to do it because now 
it's not so fancy to to make film uh, historical film in France. They prefer comedies or uh, they prefer about uh, immigration or uh, so that's difficult to find money. And but at, at least we did it and we had marvelous actors as Azil Bechstein. She's so marvelous. Uh, she um, she um, accepted the, to play in the this part to play this part in 24 hours. He, she read the script and she said yes. Mm -hmm. It was for us a, a miracle. So uh, I'm just going to remind Boston Jewish Film Festival audiences that uh, some of them have seen her before. She's been in actually quite a number of films that we've shown, uh, Mina Tannenbaum and Luba's Ghosts, Lomet in Femme comme les autres, Man is a Woman. And she actually came to the festival uh, it was uh, probably 1998, so no problem flying. And uh, she came for that, and she was a lovely guest. And also she was in Little Jerusalem and uh, He's My Girl, which is a follow-on of the Jean-Jacques Zilberman film. So um, so I think if people remember, they'll, they'll recognize her, they probably recognized her face. Um, and so she was not hard to pursue. Hmm? She's very well known in France and in Europe, and she had a lot of prizes everywhere. And she's a lovely girl, lovely, yes. And maybe you can tell us, so now we've seen the iconic picture of Leon Bloom. And uh, I wondered, was it difficult to uh, uh, find, to do the casting? The person that you have, Hippolyte Girardot, I'll just remind people, was also in some films we've shown, uh, Rachesky's Tango, and uh, One Day You'll Understand by Amos Kitai with the famous mm -hmm. Jean Moreau. So uh, was it difficult for him to say yes to someone whose face oh. was pretty known? No. no. Um, we had another actor for to 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 play Bloom, and as we uh, we put uh, we um, come on this on a retardé le film we uh, uh, mm -hmm. we shot we shot later than the uh, on the on on the on the date we we choose first. Uh, he uh, this actor before he was not free anymore. So. Um, we uh, we are we were looking for uh, a bloom, and uh, it was um, three weeks before Festival Le Cannes, and uh, I need to have my bloom. I need to. I I had my Russian bag, Jano Russian bag, but we didn't have bloom. So we went. Um, we we go to the agents, and we we send everywhere, and so. And uh, uh, once we were in a theatrical. Uh, um, um, di dinner, you know, uh, with Laurent, and uh, we asked to an actor, "Can uh, we, we we would like to to that you come to, to our film to take part in our?" And he said, "No, I am very tired now. I have something with the heart, but I know it's wonderful. Your script. Everybody says your script is wonderful. I have one idea. You have to contact Hippolyte Giardo." And um, and then uh, we didn't contact Hippolyte Girardo because we didn't know if for the uh, the financial part it would suit. You know, it's a problem. Also, you want somebody, but the uh, the, the 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 people who who are financing they are not they don't agree all the time. You know. Uh, and uh, two days after, I was so upset. I didn't. I didn't sleep. It was terrible. Somebody called me, and it was Hippolyte Girardo. I knew him. I knew him because we shot together before one film with uh, from my husband Jack Otmezgin. And he says, "Look, uh, I know that you make a film about Bloom and about Jan Oreschenbach." Um, I don't know what part I can play or not in your film, but please, also for a short part, you can you can take me. You can ask me if you want because I like such films. And I say, okay, I will think about that. <laughs> I will think about that. And then uh, with Laurent, uh, the director, we say, okay, we call him back. We say. Okay, we send you the script and we see if it works or not. And the same, he uh, um, 
he uh, it it was later it was three days before festival um, can festival and uh, he answered me i was in in the opening night from can festival can you imagine mm -hmm. and i had my iphone mm -hmm. and i see uh, i love your script i am I make you, I, I want to be Bloom. Thank you very much. Oh, fabulous. And yep. it was marvelous. It was marvelous. And tell us a bit, um, because, you know, we've had directors and, and actors before. So it sounds like as a producer, um, financial worries are a big part of that. Yes. And also, I wanted to ask a little bit, I don't know if it was for financial reasons, but um, the film is so beautifully shot. And I thought, oh, the Pyrenees are gorgeous. And then I read at the end that it wasn't the Pyrenees. You shot in Arras, uh, in the north of France. So are those financial reasons that, that you know, tell, yes. tell the producer how that works. We, we shot in the Pyrenees two days. Okay. But with a short, with a short team, not, not with everybody, you know. And then a special effect, uh, we, we, done, we done a good job. Uh, <laughs> uh, we were in Arras because uh, the north of France, they helped us very much. And, uh, you know, in France, I don't know if in the US it's the same. If you stay in France uh, and the, the, the departments of old, old France, they can help you. And they, they get money from the center of the cinema. So they, they are very interested to help you. But there is a selecting uh, committee with a lot of people inside. And we have to defend our, ourselves, you know, to say to them, uh, our film is the best, we, we have the best actors, and it would, uh, it would be successful, and so and so. You can imagine how it is difficult. And uh, that's why we, we shot in, in North of France. And uh, it was a miracle because we had a very nice weather, very nice weather. It was never rain, never rain, only sun. And it's very, very rare there yes. <laughs> in the north of France, you can imagine. Yeah. And for how long was the shoot? How long? Uh, we shot sub, um, six, six, we six weeks and two days in the Pyrenees. Okay, okay. And um, also, one thing that's wonderful is the, the interiors. Um, can you talk yes. about the set design a little bit? Um, Edith uh, Vesperini, uh, that she made the costumes. And uh, she had a lot of Cesar and she had a lot of price. She's very funny, very special very special lady, very special. She's always uh, dressed with Chinese clothes. I don't know why she's not Chinese, uh, but that's it. And she's wonderful because with, uh, with an old uh, dress, she can make a, a miracle. And uh, I like her very much. And um, what was a pity it, during the film, during the shooting, she had cancer. She has a, uh, she was uh, ill, cancer, comme on dit en anglais? Cancer. Uh, cancer, yes. She was ill, so, so, but she worked and uh, she took somebody to help her and she always smiles, always smiles. It was an example for everybody. Uh, I, I would imagine. Yeah, and she made a, a wonderful uh, job with the, with, the, with the dress. And at the beginning of the preparation, we asked her, how can we do uh, with uh, Jeanne Rechenbach with the costumes? Because she's always uh, changing place. She goes in this hotel and in this hotel she changes and so, and she says, okay, so you don't need a lot of dress. You need two suitcases and everything she will wear in the, in the film will be in these two suitcases. And she was right. She yeah. was right. And you can, uh, you can see in the film, uh, the, how do you say, the progression, uh, uh, how the, the clothes get, get more and more tired. Yeah. Uh, because uh, there is no, pro no, pro no possibility for her to buy something or to change, you know? 
exactly yes. and also and, um, and the cinematography also uh, and and the period sets were made were made for for the film uh, so that's very important uh, i mean uh, we um, we had a very nice locations mm -hmm. we found we were helped by by um, the big boss from the department uh, mm -hmm. Xavier Bertrand and um, and then we brought furniture and we had a lot of uh, uh, decorative uh, team yes I was and curious about one thing also I'm sorry did, did you no, no, no problem no uh, so um, I know that both uh, Jean and uh, and and obviously Leon Bloom were were Jewish but my sense was they might have come from different parts of society. I don't know if that was reflected in the clothes or yes. not. Uh, Bloom was uh, in jail, so he was, uh, you know, uh, he can't have uh, very smart uh, clothes. Right. And, uh, and then he, as you notice perhaps in the film, he get uh, thinner and thinner because he had nothing to eat. Nice. And uh, and then uh, you saw you see we 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 played with that you with the costume they they are too uh, too tight too tight for him, mm -hmm. and but they are, they they were both good society both okay, they were okay. uh, yes they were both good society yes she she uh, he was um, uh, very uh, uh, Bloom was very precious you know very. Uh, he, he he used to speak like uh, with very nice languages. Elegant, and, huh? Yeah, elegant, elegant, elegant. elegant. Yes. 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 Okay. And um, maybe we can just turn to the sister-in-law for a minute because she's also uh, I hadn't seen her in a long time. Emily Duquesne. I saw her years ago, and uh, of course she played for the Darden brothers, um, a very different kind of role. And um, I wondered if you could talk a little bit about. Uh, yes, about she she had Oscar, you know, she had uh, uh, she has Oscar. She has also prize uh, first prize uh, for actress in in Cannes. Uh, she's a very nice girl. She's um, how do you say very shy. Yeah. She's not she's not like uh, Elsa. Elsa also is shy, <laughs> but she's. Uh, uh, extra, uh, come on, the extraverti. Extrovert, an extrovert. Yeah, yeah she's an extrovert, extrovert. and uh, she tries not to to show that she is shy. Uh, right. But uh, Emily, she's she's scared. She's always scaring what what happened in the life after, you know. Yeah. And she's very preoccupied with the child, the children on 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 the set. You know, she's always um, for uh, not always, but she found a lot of. Uh, time many times to see how the children are, if uh, her husband is okay, and she's like a, a Jewish mother, you know. It's very <laughs> funny. It's it's very funny, and in the in the real life, um, Rene, yeah, there's a, a the right name, Rene. She um, hated, she hated Jean Orechenbach. She That's hated. Fair. You can't imagine, uh, and yes, they they uh, they were closer during the war, but only for the interest of Bloom, not not by uh, uh, by friendship, you know, no. Ah. And uh, Dominique Torres, uh, the the granddaughter, told yes. us that everybody lived in the same house. And it was terrible because they don't speak together. And one was left uh, living in left part of the house, the other one in right. And they didn't speak together. And yep. she and Dominique Torres, she was between uh, her grandmother and, 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 you know, the daughter from Bloom. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she says, you um, you can't imagine the hate they have. Right, and we had, well, it's interesting because we have a question from uh, one of our audience members, yes. Mary, who thanks you for the wonderful film. And her question had to do, she thought the evolution of the relationship in the film was wonderful, but now you've peeled back a little layer of that and told us that uh, 
maybe it wasn't quite as wonderful as we thought. No, it was wonderful during the war, but during not. the war. It's, it was exact, exact, but after it was terrible. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if we have any more audience questions right now. Um, I had a couple of questions um, also about, um, uh, excuse me, one second. Um, I had a couple of questions about the, the impact right now of the pandemic on film creativity. Um, I mean, you've managed to come out with something very creative and maybe you can just remind us, did this film, this film opened in January in Paris, yes. did it not? It and then what? January. It was difficult because we, uh, we start very good for this sort of film. It is not a comedy, you know, so we had a hundred, uh, hundred cinema who, uh, mm. who, who took the, which uh, t uh, took the film, uh, but uh, after it, it stopped because we, ha we, we have uh, all the friends, uh, they ask, you know, all the time, you start and then after, I don't know if in the US it is like that. And then uh, after you can, you can uh, sell the film uh, um, in, other, in other town, in, in the okay. district and everywhere, but it, it stopped. And oh, all it started in Paris and didn't get to go through the whole country because of the no. pandemic? Is that yes, it, it went to all country, but yep. it stopped in March, in March, because of course, because of the pandemic. And uh, it was very difficult for us. Uh, we were very sad because it was, it is a difficult film to finance, it's difficult to put out in on the cinema, you know, and we were so upset of that. But uh, in the, how do you say in English, VOD, VOD, uh, uh, on Oh, 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 are you saying the day of showing on TV or DVD uh, showing? Oh, the, no, VOD uh, to click when you click yeah. and pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was working very well. It is working very well. And also DVD, it's not too bad. And, and now I make a lot of festival also, you know, and I'm uh, with my French accent. I'm a sort of star. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. So how many... How many, is it mostly Jewish film festivals in the US? Yes. yes and yes. how many have you been to? It sounds like a lot. Every time I talk uh, to yes. you. Oh, I think 20 or something like that. And, and, and I have also other, other films. And our distributor, Neil, uh, Neil Friedman, uh, perhaps he yep. will be in charge also of Jewish festivals uh, all over the world. Well, that's great. Um, it's a complex story in many ways. And also um, she's on the one hand, a very independent woman. And on the other hand, a very old fashioned woman giving it all up for love. So uh, it's a little different. Um, she is also very complex because he, he was against the, the, the marriage, the marriage and uh, the marriage, you say? The wedding? Yes, in fact, we see the book that uh, she's reading, Du Mariage. Do you want to yes. tell us a little bit about it? Yes, he wrote this book against marriage, against marriage. But she was mar married twice. Mm -hmm. As twice. was, yeah. So uh, it's a completely yeah. contradiction, you know. Uh, but he, I don't know, he was, he's, um, He's a very, very complex uh, man, you know. Uh, when he was put on trial uh, yeah. and def he defended himself as a, a Jew and, and the principal of French Revolution, you know, and, and not, uh, um, not for him, only for, for France. Uh, and if he didn't fly, he didn't go away like Jano wanted. He, he stays but in France. Is, is, he says is uh, democracy is in in uh, in, um, in danger and mm -hmm. my for me it's nothing okay my life is nothing but I have to stay to defend the democracy and and friends mm -hmm. it's, the, wonderful. it's wonderful and uh, maybe you can talk a little bit because she herself being Jewish was an incredible I mean, if you think about uh, fighting to get to Buchenwald. There aren't too many people who do that. And maybe you can talk Nobody about that. Nobody did that, nobody. And when she went to Laval, Laval, this uh, awful uh, guy, 
and he <coughs> he say she she asked uh, I have to go to the Buchenwald because I will marry there. Mm -hmm. She didn't know uh, yet that she marry and so, but she had to have uh, something to tell to this guy, and mm -hmm. he says okay okay I give you the passport for the hell. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. Uh, although they were a little bit protected uh, from it, were were they not? Uh, no. Because it was uh, they were protected. protected. Yes. yes, they yeah. were protected. But I will tell you why. Because they were not in the camp. They were in in this house, uh, and this house uh, was not very comfortable, of course. But why <clears throat> why the German people they kept him uh, alive? only to, uh, to make like hostage, you know, after the war, uh, they say, okay, uh, we, didn't, we didn't touch, we didn't touch Bloom. And I give, we give you back, give us, give us other things. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Mandel, mm -hmm. Mandel, uh, it was a, a mistake. He was shot by mistake because they didn't want to, to shot him. They took him away but they didn't want to, to shoot him. And that's it, that's terrible. He died and it was a mistake. Yeah, no, that was quite tragic. Um, uh, there's actually a, a film by Claude Goretta that I've seen uh, uh, about him as well. Yeah. So, um, so I, I think also that uh, uh, Bloom was really then a bargaining chip. Um, we would say, I, I'm not sure how you say that. Bargain, in yeah, bargaining chip, exactement. Je cherchais, I, I, I was looking for this word. I found yeah. it and then I lost it. <laughs> Barga so, uh, bargain, bargaining chip. Yes. Bargaining yeah. chip, yes. Yeah. I notice it. Yeah. Um, a couple of other things uh, I wondered, um, have you, has, is film production now that there's a lockdown, I know that people can't go to cinemas uh, no. until December 1st, but what about uh, film production? No film production now? Yes, there is. There is, there is also shooting. Yes? Uh, yes, there is, it's allowed, but I don't know this evening what they will tell now. Tonight, it's your president is going to make a speech yes, about yes. possibly the further. Prime, the prime minister, the prime minister. Excuse me. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, they they uh, start they um, the people they shoot, but it's very difficult. But there is COVID everywhere. There is virus everywhere, and sometimes the uh, shooting uh, are obliged to sh to 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 quit to to finish. Right. We have to the stop. same thing here. If a member of the crew. I'm sorry. Hmm? To stop, they have to stop. You know. It's a very bad time, and I try. I try to put together a film, but it's complicated. Very complicated. Okay. Um, let's see. I think um, uh, I wanted to just uh, ask. Uh, someone else asked a question. Um, did you know uh, about this part of Leon Bloom's life before you began shooting the film? Yes, you did. Uh, Yes, I, I knew that he had three marriage. I knew that uh, this girl was was in love with him a uh, long time. And, uh, but I didn't, I didn't read the, because you know, the film, the script is coming from uh, a book from Dominique Missica. She's mm -hmm. a big historian lady. And uh, she made a, a very nice book about, about uh, Jeannot and about Bloom. And uh, she's, uh, um, I didn't read this book and the director invited me to lunch. And, and when a director invites a producer to lunch, it's very, very rare. And uh, it, she had something very important to tell to me. And uh, it, it is that he wanted to do this film. And mm -hmm. then he made a script. He had uh, already made a script. I read the script, I didn't like it. And we, uh, I said after a yes, uh, we we wrote a lot, eleven versions. Of wow, the that's amazing. Yeah. So we have a question from an audience member, Bruce Pastor, and we treated a little bit this question, but um, he wondered why you thought Bloom was spared by the Nazis uh, altogether and was was able to be sent not to the to the death camp, but to the to outside of the death camp. Um, 
so uh, because of because of that because he was a um, very important guy and uh, and um, the, the the nazis they don't want to lose him because it 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 is like you say bargain bargain ships bargain, bargain ship yes 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 bargaining ship yeah yeah yes and um i don't know he he was very lucky also because uh, he was not so healthy uh, because for years and years he was from jail to jail and he didn't eat well he was he had a um, problem with the uh, uh, comment dit les poumons et les, les bronches. And his lungs were a little weak, yeah. He was weak, and and then after Buchenwald, uh, he lived only five years. You know, only okay. five years is not not a lot. And uh, you know, Jano uh, stayed alone, and uh, she uh, she raised. Uh, of course, she she was with uh, Dominique Torres, the little girl. You saw in in the film, and then um, uh, she um, stayed thirty years alone, thirty years, and then she became ill and she committed suicide. Suicide. Just yes. about uh, in the last decade, I think. Right? Yes, in yeah. the last, uh, and uh, she wanted to burn all the souvenirs, but uh, Dominique Torres kept some. Okay. Yes. And my understanding is she created a kind of school. Can you tell yes, yes. what she created? A school, uh, a school who is uh, working, still working now. And uh, the, 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 um, the school is for the people they are not adapted at the life. They, uh, they, are, uh, they have hard, difficult life and they are not adapted. They, they don't uh, find uh, their way in the life. And uh, she, uh, you can be a child, you can be adult, you can go to the uh, to the, the school. It's very okay. nice school. Yes. Interesting. We have a question from Mark, who wondered how Leon Bloom is regarded by the French today. Um, um, as I told you, he um, they uh, they forgot a little bit Leon Bloom, and um, I had a lot of problem to finance the film because. Uh, he um, he kicked out from the government the communists, mm -hmm. uh, and um, we had we have in France a lot of communists uh, at the head of the of the decision of of TVs mm -hmm. and financial part, you know, and um, they they um, they split, you know, in in 1920, socialists and communists split. And uh, and the argument was over the Soviet government and the primacy of the party there, and uh, then uh, Bloom rebuilt the party, and his credo uh, was different. It was pacifism, nationalization of French industry, and measures again against unemployment. It was completely different from the communist, you know, mm -hmm. so. That was a hard, hard time. And now I think the people who are uh, educated and who, who know a little bit from history uh, uh, and who, is, who are communists, they don't like Bloom. But Bloom is, is like a, f a figure from, from the socialism. And uh, um, the government from France went to my wanted uh, to see the film and we made a lot of nice uh, avant-première. Uh, how do you say avant-première? Uh, we would say uh, the, uh, <laughs> I think of it as avant-première. I'm sorry, the, the special, they would do a special screening just before yes. the film came out. Before, um, before. The, screening. Yes, before. So, yep. uh, um, so um, um, and uh, I think they were very, very, uh, come on, the, uh, they were very glad with the film, yes. They were happy and pleased with the mm -hmm. film. Yes, yes. So we have another question, uh, again, about the word, not about the word bargaining chip, but Michael asks, uh, he's trying to draw a parallel. He's saying, despite the fact that, as he said in, Czech, in the Czech Republic, what we call the Czech Republic now, in Czechoslovakia, 
Yes. The Nazis sent many members of the government directly to Theresienstadt to their death. He's wondering what was it they hoped, why was Bloom different? What was it that the, in, that the Germans hoped to do with this French government official? What were they going to bargain for? Uh, we don't know yet um, because it was only a supposition. Um, Bloom wrote about that and he, he wondered why he, why he was taken, he was uh, kept in life, alive. And, uh, and uh, we, we never know, we, we never, I, we don't know. But I think there, there was something in their head to keep Bloom, uh, um, because at that time he was, um, he, uh, he was very, um, he was first forgotten by the, uh, the collaboration. Uh, Collaborationist, the Vichy government. But after, but after the people, they loved him very much. And he uh, worked uh, a little bit after uh, the war for the, the new government. And, uh, and he was very, very tough and very, but as, as um, the health was not so good, so. So he, what, he uh, I can't, I can't, I can't uh, respond at this question because um, nobody knows exactly, yeah. exactly. It's one of those complications from the past, yeah. it sounds like. Um, let's see if we have, I don't know if we have some other um, questions. Uh, certainly have some resources, uh, which um, I think people can look at in the chat um, for finding out more, uh, more about him. Um, I think I had a couple of other questions. Um, when are there, are there, is there something you're working on now? So I had a question, not about Bloom, but uh, about your own work. So despite the pandemic, uh, it seems you're being very creative and working with someone on a, perhaps on a new film? Yes. Can you, uh, I'm working, you know, uh, <clears throat> as, a, as Jew, because I am Jewish, and I knew that very late in my life. <clears throat> And uh, <clears throat> I am very I'm concerned by Jewish uh, questions. Mm -hmm. And um, so I try always to make film around Jewish questions, around mm -hmm. sometimes on the war, sometimes on it. Uh, I, I, um, I produce a, a very nice uh, mini series about uh, the birth of Israel. And uh, now uh, we are working with my um, with a, a director, ja Jacques Otmesgin, about uh, a film um, um, uh, about music, 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 about a pianist uh, mm -hmm. be uh, before, during the war, and after the war. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a very nice film how the um, artist, why the artist uh, has to stop to work when the, the government is bad, you know, the, an artist is an artist. So uh, that's it. So it's very difficult subject, but it's very, very interesting. So if I understand, it's about the impact of politics on artists, um, which yes. is appropriate for, for our times as well as, yes. as past times as well. Um, I think we have time for one last question, if there is one. Uh, and. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if not, um, I think what I would say is, uh, you know, we hope that next time we see you, it will be in person. And uh, we look forward to hearing- I, I would love that. I would love that to make all the festivals I did in the US. I wanted to do that, yes. <laughs> uh, and it would be great. And, and then we could see our audience as well and you could enjoy the audience and vice versa. So. Um, thank you so much for this film, and we're looking forward to your next one. And um, um, just, I'm sorry for my bad English. Huh? No, 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 you do fine. I, I think everyone has understood, and and also you speak through your film, which um, is lovely. And uh, so thank you very much. And, thank you. Uh, thank and you good, good luck. We hope that you don't have too many tough rules coming up, but uh, when it's all over, we'll see one another. It's wonderful to meet you, uh, or meet you. Even <laughs> virtually, right. Okay. Thank, you. thank you, Nelly. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We hope to see you at more movies. There are two more coming up today. Uh, so we will see you soon. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.